I spend way too much time thinking about and trying new note-taking apps, so I thought it would be fun to put them on a tier list. I asked Twitter what their favorite note-taking apps were, and I collected a list of 24, which I've arbitrarily divided up into different categories. We're gonna rank them from S tier to D tier. S tier being super awesome apps that I would love to use every day, and D tier apps that I would recommend no one use. All right, it's tier list time. All right, we're gonna start with some old school apps, ones that aren't even digital. So we're gonna start with pen and paper. I'm old enough that when I went to school, everything I did was pen and paper. Three ring binder notebooks, stacks of paper. Handwriting is great for memory, but you can't search your notes. And sometimes you lose your notes. And if your house catches on fire, you definitely lose your notes. And we're gonna give classic pen and paper a C tier. Much better options out there. The next old school app is a Zettelkasten. This is another analog technique where you use index cards like these and put them in a Zettelkasten or a slip box. This technique worked well for Nicholas Luhmann who wrote dozens of papers and dozens of books. I believe authors like Robert Greene, Ryan Holiday, Robert Cairo all use techniques that are similar to the Zettelkasten. It requires some mind bending to get your head around how it works. I recommend you check out the book, How to Take Smart Notes, but it's sort of like a level up above pen and paper. So we're gonna give it a B. Still can't search, still have to do these like weird index things. You might lose some stuff. And again, if it catches on fire, you don't have your notes. Our next category is simple notes. These are apps that probably come with your phone or your computer. They might have like tagging and folders, but other than that, there's nothing complicated going on. First up is Apple Notes. We're gonna give Apple Notes an A for Apple. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, Apple Notes is great. It's got folders, it's got tags. You can draw pictures in it if you've got an iPad. It's very easy to access, very quick, and it seems like they're continuing to make upgrades to it. If you wanna get more complicated, you'll need to use a different app, but Apple Notes is actually pretty great. Up next is Google's equivalent, Google Keep. Google makes a lot of products that you're not really sure if they're gonna keep supporting it years into the future. I feel like the future of Google Keep is kind of up in the air. I feel like no one really knows that it's there. <laughs> Sometimes they move it or like, I'm worried they might change the name of it or something. The organization in Google Keep is kind of horrible. The only way you can do anything with it is to use these tags that aren't that great. It's only available if you have a Google account. Uh, I'm gonna give it like a D tier. I really don't like Google Keep and I don't even know if it's gonna be around. Next up is Simple Note. Simple Note is what Google Keep wishes it was. If you're not locked into the Apple ecosystem, Simple Note is cross-platform across basically anything. It also has a web app. Again, if all you need to do is keep track of a to-do list or a gift list or something, it's perfect. Giving Simple Note a B. Next up is Standard Notes, kind of another simple application, but the UI is really nice. And if you're worried about your privacy, Standard Notes has you covered. Everything is totally encrypted. So even though you're syncing your notes to their servers, it's totally encrypted. They'll never be able to look at what's in your notes. That's pretty cool. Now, the problem with that is if you lose your password, you also lose all your notes. So you gotta be really careful with encrypted notes like this. I'm gonna give Standard Notes another B. All right, up next, Super Nerd Apps. These are apps for super nerds. If you like Linux, if you like coding, if you like open source, these are your jam. When I asked Twitter about different note-taking apps, I think some people were joking when they said Emacs and VI, but we're gonna include them anyway. I actually do know someone that keeps a lot of his notes in Emacs. Emacs is super extensible. Uh, you can basically make your own note-taking app inside of it if you want. That's kind of crazy to me, but you can do it. For the right person, Emacs is an S tier. I think for most people, it's kind of a C or like a D tier. I'll give it a C to be nice. Vim is in a similar boat, although it's probably less extensible than Emacs. I love Vim, it's like my text editor of choice, but it really doesn't make a good note-taking app. You're basically looking at files and folders on your computer system. It's gotta get a D tier. I love my Vim, but it's not a good note-taking app. Next up is Notational Velocity. This is one of the like original note-taking apps that kind of abandoned the idea of folders. The whole thing was based around text files that you could search really quickly. I think Notational Velocity is cool, but other note-taking apps have kind of replaced it. I'm gonna give it a C. All right, next we have apps for students. First up is GoodNotes. Uh, GoodNotes is an iPad app, so if you have an iPad, that's great. If you don't, that's not great. <laughs> GoodNotes is really nice for annotating lecture slides, for handwriting stuff, for drawing things. I like it a lot. It's a solid B. Notability is another iPad note-taking app for students. I like it a little more than GoodNotes. The Something about the interface is great. You can record a lecture and kind of play back the stuff that you're drawing while you're doing that. It's really great if you like sketch notes. The one downside to both GoodNotes and Notability is that it's kind of awkward to put in text where you're typing and then portability from your iPad to like a PC is not great. I'm also gonna give Notability a B tier. Maybe like a B plus. I think it's a little better than GoodNotes. But if you're a student, you should definitely look at these two apps and see if you like them. Our last student app is RemNote. Um, RemNote's an interesting one. It's sort of like a note-taking app with a built-in space repetition system in it. Uh, if you're not familiar with space repetition, it's a way to time the frequency of flashcards so that you can memorize things faster. If you're not familiar with space repetition and you're a student, I highly recommend you check out apps like Anki or like this one, RemNote. RemNote is nice because it allows you to build context around your flashcards that you're studying. I think it's a really cool concept. 
The UI is a little janky, but it's free. If you're a student, I think it's totally worth putting up with a kind of janky UI to level up your study game. Space Repetition is super powerful if you're a student. Highly recommend it. I'm gonna put RemNote as an S tier. That's our first S tier, pretty cool. Our next category is folder-based apps. These are apps that organize the notes around folders. First up is the classic Microsoft OneNote. OneNote kind of has a soft spot in my heart. It's the first digital note-taking tool I really used in college. I had a professor who forced us to use OneNote to submit homework and to take notes in class, and actually really appreciated that. OneNote is actually pretty robust. It syncs across different devices. You can write in it, you can make equations in it. I think the UI is a little janky and sometimes it's got sync problems, but it's actually pretty solid. I'm gonna give OneNote a B for Boomer. Next up, we've got Evernote. Oh man, Evernote, another app that has a beautiful place in my heart. When I first took Building a Second Brain, I built my first second brain in Evernote, and it was wonderful. Evernote's a great tool. I still recommend it to people who are new to second brains and personal knowledge management systems. But man, it's just not something I want to use anymore. It feels like Evernote is constantly updating the app without really changing much, or when they do change things, it's stuff I don't want. I feel like the sync is slow, just launching the app is slow. It's like fine. Like. I don't know, I should give it a C, but I'm gonna give it a B just cause you know, the nostalgia value. Next up is DevonThink. DevonThink is great if you're a researcher or if you're someone who handles a lot of PDF documents. Again, it's another folder based structure. You can annotate files like PDFs and add notes. If you're doing a lot of research and need to organize stuff, it's great. I think if you're a researcher, you would love DevonThink. But for people who don't handle PDFs a lot, like I don't, probably not a necessary tool. I'm gonna give DevonThink a B also. All right, our next category is writing apps. These are apps that are optimized for people who write for a living, whether you're an author, a copy editor, or something like that. First up, we have IA Writer, which is cross-platform and I believe a one-time fee. IA Writer is great. It lets you focus in on the stuff you're writing and kind of hides all the organizational stuff, but it still has organizational tools like folders and tags and that sort of thing. If you write a lot and you need a focused editor, IA Writer is great. Ulysses is like IA Writer, but it is Mac and iOS only, and it is a subscription model. I would kind of put them both on par, but the subscription model part kind of puts me off a little bit and it's not cross-platform that could be a plus or a minus for you i'm gonna give it sc bear is another markdown editor that's for people who are writers i like the ui a lot better than ia writer or ulysses and i think that fans of bear like really like bear again it's another one of those mac only apps i think as far as markdown editors for writers go Bear is the way to go. I'm going to give it a A tier. Our next section is power apps. These are apps that start to let you organize information in more complicated ways. They might include things like task management or calendars, but they also have a user interface that allows someone who doesn't know how to code to do some really powerful stuff. First up is Notion. I really like Notion. It's easy enough to get started with and get the ball rolling. If you want to dive deeper, you can. If you learn how to use databases and use linked databases, it can be super, super powerful. But if that stuff sounds too intimidating, you can get a lot of good use out of Notion. It's great for collaborating, it's great for personal work. If you want to manage your tasks, you can. It's a great way to manage projects. In the past, it's been kind of slow, but the team worked really hard to make it faster. Notion gets an S tier easily. Next up is AmpleNote. AmpleNote has a lot of really powerful features like bi-directional linking, like tagging. And they also have one of the best implementations of a task manager I've seen inside of a note-taking app. They have this ranking system for tasks that works really well. I like it a lot. It's still a relatively new software and there's some janky things with tags and nested tags that kind of don't always work. For that reason, I'm giving it like a B tier. I think in the future, it could easily move up to A or S tier if they continue to work on the product. Mem.ai, I'll be honest, I actually haven't had a chance to use Mem.ai yet, but a lot of people were asking about it. And from what I've seen of demos, the creators of Mem.ai have a very unique and creative take on how you handle the way you work with notes. They allow you to do things like snooze notes, like have a dedicated inbox for notes where you can handle them, uh, schedule things for the future. I really like the direction that Mem.ai is going. My one concern with apps like these is if there's something in the workflow that you disagree with, it's gonna be hard for you to change it. So before you go all in on an app like Mem.ai, make sure that you really like the workflow that they're providing. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, we're gonna give it a B. And our last but not least section is overpowered apps. These are apps for PKM nerds. If you love note-taking, if you spend a significant portion of your day inside of a note-taking app, you should probably take a look at one of these. Room Research has kind of brought about a change in the note-taking world. Whereas before most things were folder based, Rome has brought about things like networked thought, bidirectional linking, outliner style apps. In a lot of ways, Rome is revolutionary. Although some of these ideas have been floating around before, no one had put them together quite the way that the team at Rome Research had before. I like Rome, it's not perfect. Sometimes it's slow, there's some privacy issues, but man, it's such a nice tool to use. Thinking in blocks is a 
totally different mindset shift. It has to get an S tier. Next we have Athens Research, which is an open source clone of Rome. I'm kind of conflicted about this one. I like that they're making an open source thing that's self-hosted, uh, that's like Rome, but I feel like if you're making a complete clone of Rome, you're always gonna be behind them. You're always gonna be kind of living in the shadow of the other app. And I really wish that the creators of Athens Research would do their own thing, make something unique and more attuned to their creative vision. Rome is Rome because of its founder, Connor. Athens Research is Athens Research because they copy someone else. I'm not so big on that. For that reason, I give it a D tier. And last but not least is Obsidian. I've been playing around with Obsidian lately on my second channel where I'm building a PKM from scratch. And I like it a lot. It's got some similarities to Rome in that there's bi-directional linking and emphasis on network thought. There are obviously some differences. It's not block-based, it's page-based. It uses Markdown for formatting, but I really like how easy it is to install plugins, to change themes, how responsive the dev team seems to be to want to changes, and how nice the community is. I'm putting Obsidian in S tier also. All right, so that's my note-taking tier list. This is a lot of fun to make, and if you think that I put your favorite note-taking app in the wrong slot, you're wrong. If you enjoyed this video, check out this playlist, or check out this video that the YouTube algorithm handpicked just for you. See you next time.